Jesus. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Can everybody hear me? Can everybody see me? Craig, Chris, are, I know you're there. Hear and see fine. I'm waiting for the chat to catch up. Meanwhile, I'm Bill. You can hear me, right? Yes. Yes, you're fine. So I'm going to I'm going to assume if you can hear me that everybody can hear me, and I'm going to just start chatting for a minute um, until somebody says they can't hear me. So, hello, hello, and happy holidays, Karen. Hello, Karen. Can you hear me? And Chris and Craig and company. Um, so. In thinking about what to do today to close out the year, and this is our last lunch with Len for the year. Thanks, Chris. Chris can hear me. Um, one of the things that I think many of us struggle with is this idea of knowing who we are and what we stand for. So I put together a presentation. I have a I actually have a PowerPoint presentation, and I'm going to actually walk us through an exercise of that's going to help us to look at that big question, who we are, what do we stand for, where are we going? And I sure hope that you folks all get something out of this. So let me, I guess I have to do screen share first. I forgot screen share. Let's go screen share the entire screen. And Bill's my monitor over there. He's going to let me know that you can see my screen. And I'm going to bring up the PowerPoint presentation. Here it is. Bill. You're good. You're good. All right. So what I'm going to walk us through today is, a, is an exercise in defining your major life purpose. I'm gonna. I want to give credit where credit is due. It's adapted from Jack Canfield's book, The Success Principles. And I believe if you were to grab a copy of The Success Principles, you would find this on page 29. And it's also partially extracted from Diane Hockman's The Guru Code. So let me continue. So the question is, who are you, and what do you stand for? And the reality is those who aspire to be pinnacle leaders cannot succeed without answering this question. And I'm going to quote Diane Hoffman here. Diane taught us, and this was in the Guru Code number one, way up front in the language of kings. She taught us that without understanding who we are and what we stand for, we will not succeed. And I quote Diane. And she said, until we know who we are and what we stand for, people will look at us like we are one of the herd, one of the masses. We won't stand out. We won't be credible. And we will flounder and fail, collapse in the face of challenge. Those are my words, not Diane's. And run for cover when confronted with adversity. And I think in a slide or two, I will give you an example of what I mean by that. So let's keep moving. Again, quoting Diane, people follow people. They follow people who know where they are and what they stand for, who are going somewhere, who are sure of themselves. And this is really not about making money. It's about attracting followers. And it is about leadership. And without the followers, without the leadership, the money, which we all want to have a little more of, isn't going to come. It may come in spurts, it may come in dribbles, but it's not going to come with consistency. So what's the wrong answer to the question, who am I and what do I stand for? So you might say, well, I'm a network marketer and I sell skincare products. That's a, that's a non-answer. And it's an example of why not really defining who you are and what you stand for will cause you to fail. It's a weak answer. And if that's your answer, you're going to run for cover when adversity strikes. 
That's what you're doing with who you are. It's not who you are. So if I were to take this person who said he was a network marketer selling skincare products and work on him a little bit, maybe a better answer would be I'm a caring, sympathetic leader who teaches people to feel good about themselves with products and services that enhance their lifestyle. Well, that comes closer to a definition of who I am as a person. And by the way, that's not me. But now when someone's standing in front of you saying, well, you're trying to offer me an illegal pyramid scheme, and you're going to go to jail, you have the strength to shrug your shoulders and say, next, because you know who you are, you know what you stand for, and it's not as superficial as being a network marketer with a skincare product. It's something much deeper than that. It's someone who cares about people and helps them. And so you can shrug your shoulders, say next, move on. Brian Tracy tells us that you need to define your major definite purpose in life, then organize all your activities around it. And once again from Jack Canfield's book, Jack Canfield's life purpose, according to Jack, is to inspire and empower people to live their highest vision in the context of love and joy. And the way he does that is with books, with seminars, with teaching, with um, his uh, Chicken Soup for the Soul series, etc. So that's an example of what we mean by a life purpose statement. So now we're going to follow the lead of Jack Canfield and we're going to look at how we can come up with a life purpose statement for ourselves, and we're going to start by making a list of the things that we're most joyful and alive when we're doing. What do I, what do you love to do when you get out of bed? And you know, it took me a long time to figure this one out, because every time somebody asked me, what do I love to do? I will tell them, well, I love to go snow skiing. I love to water ski. And what I finally realized is that the element that sits in snow and water skiing was that I love to teach. I have started probably close to a hundred people on snow skis in my life and I have been approached to be a ski instructor but I don't want to be. I don't want to be officially a ski instructor. I don't want to get paid to teach people to ski because I don't want that commitment but I've taken many friends, grandchildren, and children and taught them to ski. Did a water ski and I've taught water skiing. I love to be on stage. I'm one of those really crazy, insane people that thrives on standing in front of an audience. And I've given hundreds of presentations worldwide in my prior life as, a, as an engineer and technology guy. I love mentoring, teaching, lecturing, inspiring, and helping. And the, the hidden order that sits in all of that is I love to teach. I love to help people and I love to mentor people. So what do you love to do? What do you feel most joyful and alive doing? So make that list and I'm going to actually ask you to take out a pen and paper. Let's play with me. List just a couple or three things that make you feel absolutely joyful, that you would jump out of bed if today was the day you were going to get to do that. You wouldn't, there wouldn't be any hesitation in the morning. You'd be up, ready to go. Now, it's, it's, a, continuation, it's a continuation of the same question. What is it, and perhaps worded in a different way, what is it that excites you so much you will leap out of bed at the crack of dawn with enthusiasm, optimism, and energy? What do you love to do? And uh, probably, probably the wrong answer for most of us is generate a capture page. That's, that may be a necessary evil in the course of doing the things we love to do, but it's not what we love to do. What do you love to do so much that you do it every day even if you weren't getting paid for it? Hint, 
I'm doing it right now. I love to do this stuff. And I'm going to tell you that watching I Love Lucy returns doesn't reruns doesn't count. <laughs> How many of you like I, I Love Lucy? Uh, again, as I've told you in prior webinars, I've learned to turn off the television. It doesn't even exist in my life anymore. Now, from page 23 of the success principles, here we go. We're going to dig in now. List two of your unique personal qualities. And by the way, I'm going to upload this PowerPoint presentation. It'll be available in the files section of the Lunch with Len um, group. So you'll be able to download it if you want it. But go ahead. You got your paper out. List two of your unique personal qualities. And Jack Canfield uses enthusiasm and creativity as examples. So for you personally, what are two of your personal qualities? And I'm hesitating now to give you a, a moment to think about that. And you know what? You don't have to get this right the first time. Just humor me, humor yourself, do the exercise, give it a try. I'm waiting for you. Are you done? Now, list one or two ways you enjoy expressing those qualities when interacting with others. And again, Jack Canfield uses support and inspire as examples of the kinds of things we're looking for here. List one or two ways you enjoy expressing those qualities when interacting with others. Yeah, I'm going to give you a few seconds to think about that. And oh, by the way, at the end of this, I'm going to tell you what mine are. So I'm, I'm going, to, going to give you a peek into what I've written for myself. But I don't want to do that yet. I want you to do this for yourself, to take a first cut at this. So are you ready? Let's move on. Now, assume a perfect world. What does your perfect world look like? How is everyone interacting with everyone else? What does it feel like? Write your answer as a statement in the present tense, describing the ultimate condition, the perfect world as you see it and feel it. And remember, a perfect world is a fun place to be. So again, from Jack's book, an example, everyone is freely expressing their own unique talent. Everyone is working in harmony. Everyone is expressing love. So I'm going to shut up now for another eh, maybe 30 seconds or so and just give you a chance to write a statement about what you think your perfect world looks like. Okay, does everybody have their first cut at this? Here we go. Some assembly required. Put it together. So you take your first two qualities. In the case of our example, it was the creativity and enthusiasm. And the way you use those qualities to support and inspire others to achieve a vision of your perfect world, in this case to help others to freely express their talents in a harmonious and loving way. And this becomes your dominant theme in your life. Does everybody see that? I'm going to back up and come through this briefly and quickly, so as to not to bore everybody. But we're going to take a couple of your unique personal qualities, which you've listed, 
we're going to take a couple of ways that you enjoy expressing those qualities when interacting with others. We're going to define what our perfect world looks like, and then we're going to assemble it into a statement of how we use our qualities to help others to achieve our perfect world, to live in our perfect world, to become part of our perfect world. Jack Canfield credits this approach to defining your life purpose to Arnold M. Patton, a spiritual coach and author of You Can Have It All. Now, I'm going to guess that some of you are looking at this going, whoo, this is way too whoo, whoo, whoo for me. I mean, you know, I... And I tell you, I'm going to say something. It took me a long time to reach the conclusion that I'm about to give you for me personally. Anytime I tried to do this type of exercise, up until, oh, I'm going to say this year, recently, I would get to this point and I would curl my paper up in a ball and toss it across the room because I didn't believe it. And the problem I was having is that I didn't believe in myself. I didn't believe that I was good enough to aspire to be the person that these statements would lead me to believe I should be. I wasn't there. I didn't trust my own self to really execute at, at the level. And in a moment, I'm going to give you an example of what I've come up with for me. So now what? Once you've determined and written down your life purpose, again, from Jack Canfield's book, The Success Principles, read it every day, preferably in the morning. Make certain your goals and vision are aligned with and serve your life's major purpose. And refine your life's major purpose as you mature and develop yourself. Now that last sentence is my words, because I, I believe that if I do this exercise today, I'm going to get one answer. If I do it a year from now, I might get a somewhat different answer. The core values probably aren't going to change much. much. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute when I get to my own personal statement. And again, I'm, and this also comes from Jack's book, an alternative or alternate approach is to meditate. And after you reach a deep level of self-love, oh my God, he's talking about self-love. Now I'm supposed to love myself. Holy crap, how can I do that? I don't believe in myself. I don't even like myself sometimes. And we all go through that level of self-talk, and I'm going to tell you right now, for each and every one of us, if we're going to be pinnacle leaders, we got to clear out that self-talk. And that's one of the things that's held me back. And I'm going to tell you that I am a different person today than I was a year ago because I've been working on me at an enormous rate, clearing out the crap and the self-talk. So, once you get to a deep level of self-love and peace, ask yourself, what is my purpose? Why am I here? What is, you, what is my unique role in the universe? And then listen carefully for the answer. Allow it to come. And I, I now know that what I'm here to do is to help you. And when I say you, I don't necessarily mean each and every one of you personally, although you're part of that equation. It is to help as many people as I can to achieve the things they want to achieve. That's what I'm here to do. I know that now. And a year ago, I wouldn't have believed that because I didn't think I was good enough. So I'm going to close with a personal example. I did this exercise sometime during the guru code. I have it in my notebook. What I wrote down is two of my unique personality uh, qualities are intelligent and flexible. And the ways of expressing those qualities are to understand and to inspire. And in my perfect world, there is peace, harmony, respect, and mutual admiration and acceptance among all people. And so when I assemble that into a mission statement, my purpose is to use my intelligence and flexibility to understand individuals and inspire peace, 
harmony and acceptance among people. And that is what I have come up with for my major purpose in life. It may not be yours, it shouldn't be yours, and it may change. Ask me a year from now and it might be somewhat different, but I can tell you that a year from now I will still care about people, I will still love to teach, I will still want to help, I will still want to inspire peace and harmony, and I will still want to encourage people to accept and to love each other. And my perfect world may not be achievable in my lifetime, but I believe that it is achievable. And I believe that if all of humanity works on it, we can get there. And I know I'm going really deep. So then I look at my major activities and I ask myself, are they in, a, in alignment? And I think, I think to a great extent they are. MLSP is about helping people. Lunch with Len, this is about helping people. World Ventures is about helping people. Uh, I have a lot of things in place for support for animals. That may not be about helping people, but it's, I, still, I still have a big soft spot, soft spot in my heart for wolves and infant, orphaned elephants. And you know, I, I have a sponsored orphaned elephant in Africa, and I contribute to the, uh, the, society, to the groups that are trying to save the wolves, and et cetera. And then I contribute to the World Food Organization, and I'm, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I'm really stoked that uh, <clears throat> sorry. I'm really stoked that MLSP is involved in the uh, water projects in the world, and World Ventures is also. So part of my part of the reason that I love World Ventures is because of their humanitarian efforts and their uh, building the schools in uh, South America and etc. So that, that are some of the things that attract me to that as an organization and make me want to be part of it. So, that's it. Happy New Year, and let's rock 2015 together. Now I'm going to stop the share. And the slideshow. And we're back up here. Yeah, Craig, that's a good one. Now, does anybody want to come across and, and, and jump into the conversation? We have uh, we have a few minutes left, but I'm willing to bring anybody across who wants to. <clears throat> so just tell me in the chat if you'd like to come across and uh, jump in. Let me see what some of the comments... Chris, <laughs> if I was going to be able to see all of you, I would jump out of bed with a big smile. Love it, Chris. So, since the only person to cross right now is Bill, I'm going to pick on him. What do you think, Bill? Is that useful? Oh, Craig, yeah. says, Craig says, love it, Len. Great stuff. Cool. Thanks, Craig. Um, makes you stop and think as we go into 2015, you know, where we are and where we're headed. You know, thank you. There is actually a method to my madness, given that this is the last lunch with Len of 2014. The next time we meet will be 2015. I actually was thinking, what could I do that could help propel us into 2015? And, you know, I believe, I absolutely believe Diane is correct that if we can't define who we are and what we stand for, we're not going to achieve the level of success that we'd all like to achieve. And I know, for me personally, that's been holding me back for a long time. And this is the year that I broke through and found myself. So... <clears throat> Anybody else want to come across and have any comments? Uh, just, just tell me in the chat. Otherwise, we'll we'll close it off in a couple of minutes. I'm waiting to see if there's any more. Uh... Thank you, Jackson. Karen says, 
Are you doing it? Karen, can I bring you across? I'm not sure what that means. Let's see if she comes across. I clicked on her. She disappeared. That's a good sign. When you click on somebody and they disappear, I, I, I found out that that's actually a good sign when somebody disappears. It means they're on their way. No, it's on right now. If there's anybody, who, you know what? I'm going to click on a couple of you folks. If you don't want to come across, you don't have to accept. Just don't accept, okay? So don't feel don't feel compelled. But let's see if uh, is anybody else showing up? You, me, Bill? Because I uh, I clicked on Karen. All right, Karen, are you coming? We'll see. We have about four minutes left. All right, I'm going to click Craig, Jackson, Nell, Hi, Karen. Hi. I'm trying to figure out, am I on? <laughs> what I'm doing. Okay. Greg. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Now, I don't know where Lynn went. Where'd he go? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I was invited over on a hangout earlier today. My, I couldn't get my audio working, so I'm surprised you can hear me. Yeah, you're good. Good. Uh, but Didn't I don't know. Don't know what happened to Lynn. <laughs> it says the chat's disabled on my end. Yeah, same here. Well, Bill, maybe we'll have to pick on you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about that. <clears throat> I don't, I don't it's okay, know you can pick on me. <laughs> I wonder if anyone else is out there still. I don't know. I don't know. I only see three of us. Yep. Me too. Hmm. Oh well, I'll tell you I got a lot out of what Lynn was talking about because I have some real blocks that I'm trying to get through and, and he's trying to make me think it through and I, I appreciate it. I'm not there yet but I am working on it. Yeah, that's a very difficult subject. Mm -hmm. yeah. It takes time to work through it. I agree. I see all these little icons all over the place, but I wouldn't push any of them because I'm afraid of them. <laughs> yeah, Lynn, Lynn keeps bringing up the uh, uh, success pr principles with Jack Canfield, and I've got the book. As a matter of fact, <laughs> it was uh, autographed by Jack Canfield. Uh, you can't see that, oh, wow. but it was. And I read it years ago. I need to get it back out and reread it. There's some good stuff Lynn's been covering in it. I'm going to have to read it too. Same here. I'm going to write it down. Yeah, I wrote that down <clears throat> in my daily log. Yeah, I, I uh, was a part of a group that invited Jack to come and speak, and I actually got to go out and eat dinner with him. Years ago, powerful man. Mm -hmm. Well, I was hoping that uh, Lynn would come back on here. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know what happened. He's probably out there somewhere laughing at us. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody else that was over there in the chat. Yeah, 
I don't know. <laughs> uh, all I can tell is that it's still live. We're still broadcasting, and there's only three of us. Yeah, yeah. that's what it looks like. <laughs> Craig, what kind of message is behind you? Is it something that you want to talk to us about? I can't quite read it. Probably not. It's notes that my daughter puts up there for me. Oh, cool. All right. <laughs> I've, used the, I've used the board in some training videos, but uh, I think those are just notes from her. That's cool, though. <laughs> she always inspires me in the mornings. Hey, that's worth it. Yeah. Well, you can see I still have my Christmas tree up. I'll get around to it. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah, yeah. Well, it's not the first yet. <laughs> I know. That's true. No, I was contemplating on taking the lights down yesterday when it was warm. Now it's snowing. I should have. But. Ooh. 